10 dogs that have the same problem, it's not a problem. It's a living condition here. It takes a lot to pass a law through the United States Congress. Even a very popular law usually takes years and years. And trying to curtail a bad activity is often impossible. There's only one federal law that protects animals in laboratories, and it doesn't have anything to do with the kinds of experiments that are done. It doesn't prohibit any experiments on animals. It's what I would call a housekeeping measure. The Animal Welfare Act basically says an animal needs enough room to stand up, turn around, sit down, and make normal postural adjustments. For a monkey, that means swinging or putting their hands above their heads. But you'll find cages not much bigger than the monkey's body itself, bars all round, and a water bottle, unless the experiment calls for no water, and maybe a plastic ball if you're lucky, and that's a lot. If the psychological well-being of a monkey conflicts with doing an experiment, the psychological well-being issue leaves. There's no point in the Animal Welfare Act where the costs to the animal are so severe in pain and stress that you can't go there. The focus is on continuing to do the research. There's no protection for animals against bad science other than an internal oversight committee. But what we find again and again is that they aren't doing their job. If they're not familiar with this area of research, they have no way of knowing if this is a flawed study, if it's redundant, if it's exceptionally cruel and it could be done in a less cruel way. They rely entirely on the information that's given to them in most cases. These bodies serve as rubber stamping committees. 99% of the protocols are approved right away. The bodies are stacked with animal experimenters, and there's a lot of you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. What you will find is an experiment will often say, well, we need to repeat this experiment over and over again to see if we get the same results. Once an experimenter has a grant that's paying their mortgage, they just keep putting in for it every year. You could have read it in a book 40 years ago, or 50 years ago, or last summer. It's there, it's been done. I don't think that's what the American public expects that just because some person is filling out pages of journals, that somehow justifies inflicting so much harm, trauma, suffering, pain on sentient animals. This incentive structure results in people continuing to do what they do, or what they know how to do. And if you know how to do animal research, that's what you're gonna do. It's important to note that the Animal Welfare Act excludes most of the animals who are used in laboratories. Rats, mice, amphibians, agricultural animals, birds, they're all entirely excluded for any protection under the Animal Welfare Act. So for example, if somebody is inside a laboratory that is doing experiments on mice and they're doing some ridiculous procedure on the animal that causes great pain or say, watering devices are malfunctioning and animals are drowning in cages. There's no legal action that can be taken by the U.S. Department of Agriculture, which enforces the Animal Welfare Act. The reason mice and rats are excluded from the Animal Welfare Act in the United States is because the animal experimenters and their lobbyists fought tooth and nail to keep them out. And meanwhile, the Animal Welfare Act is the only law that requires accountability of numbers of animals used. But the best estimates tell us that about 120 million animals are killed in U.S. laboratories every single year. There are about 1,200 laboratories registered with the federal government. There are something over 100 inspectors with the USDA. They have to inspect every laboratory, every roadside zoo every circus. When you see how few USDA inspectors there are and how infrequently they visit these labs, it might be once every year, and yet the animals are there day and night, every day and every night, year after year, then you know it's almost as if there wasn't an inspection system. The amount of oversight that exists in animal laboratories is highly variable. Veterinarians and technicians, they make too much trouble. That is, have too many complaints about what researchers are doing. They may be putting themselves in jeopardy. 
We know from our investigators and whistleblowers whom we've worked with, by and large, when somebody goes to their supervisor to say that something is amiss from the perspective of animal welfare, the supervisors don't want to hear it. They have their supervisors to answer to. They don't gain anything by being a squeaky wheel. We had a whistleblower from Columbia University, and she saw puppies who were being killed improperly. She saw monkeys who were subjected to invasive surgeries where they weren't given adequate post-operative pain relief. And she went through the proper channels. She went to her supervisor. She went to the oversight body. And she was barred entry into the laboratories. That's how they dealt with it. So she knocked on our door, and then we went full throttle and got some of those experiments stopped, got the head veterinarian fired, and got a lot of changes implemented through that system. We need more regulations to protect animals in laboratories. And there aren't more because the animal experimentation lobby is very big. We're talking most of the major universities in the United States and some of the biggest corporations in the world. This is a multi-billion dollar industry. So all of these people have an interest in seeing the same system continue. They don't want more inspectors inside their facilities. They want to be free to do whatever they want that they can get funding for. Of course, it's possible that those animal tests are not really predicting what is going to happen in humans, but that's the inertia barrier because of history. They've always been doing it that way. They're very comfortable doing it. They don't want to invest in a new method. It's a high risk because your entire history is animals. Do you have your own animal pen full of animals? And do you have scientists able to read the results when you use those animals? Heavens yes. I felt like this when I had an animal colony myself. I was constantly under stress to prove that it made any sense to have that colony. So I got other people to use those animals. There's a lot of pressure from those companies that create holding environments caging, that produce food, that produce different types of animals. I mean, this is big business. Um, there's just no doubt about it. You know, you'd lay out the money for this work. It, it has a natural momentum for innocent beings to be used. Every moment of their lives is struggle, pain, distress. We see very bizarre behaviors brought on by limited space, limited stimulation. No animal wants to be the subject of an experiment, so of course they're gonna fight for their lives. 